Well, guys, we are here, and all things must come to a close. Uh, if you guys have been keeping up with me, I've been doing videos on where I've worked and what my experiences was working at so-called jobs. And again, I've been uploading pretty quickly, and maybe I should have done a little bit more. Uh, I would say better, but either way, I just want to go ahead and say thank you for everything and hopefully you guys have enjoyed the stories and this is going to be my last one um i just i hope that you guys have enjoyed what i have been able to bring to the table and hopefully if you guys have worked in any of these locations or if you guys have worked in anything like this then you know hopefully you've enjoyed yourselves but overall let me tell you guys my last uh job that now it's not going to be in order so if you guys are a little curious no it's not going to be in order uh but where one of the places that i did enjoy working at for a time uh where i met a lot of good people had a lot of crazy experiences was uh margaritaville uh casino resort and i originally did not think i was gonna get this job i thought this job was gonna be absolutely amazing i recently got hired on as a security guard and the way this works, if you guys are unsure, you have you start off as a green shirt, which is basically you got to earn your casino license, and you're out on the golf cart. And pretty much what my entire duties were while I was a green shirt, because you were on the floor most of the time, and you become a red shirt. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. When you're a green shirt, you have to check the luxurious cars. You have to check, uh, you know, if the hotel guests have an issue with their pin number or their issues with uh, someone being escorted somewhere or something with you know your rounds for checking all the restaurants and stuff like that and help open up the doors for certain uh, you know restaurants within the area so again there was a lot of different things that you do as a green shirt and it gets boring and of course you take guests from the parking lot or try to offer them a ride from the the cart to uh the front door the side door whatever have you and then months later you're you know months later you become red shirt now when you become a red shirt that basically means that you have your gaming license you get on the floor and pretty much all you do is stand and walk around and you're trying to find something to do you're really just standing there and it, it that's pretty much all you're doing you're talking to guests you're you know, making sure there's no underages getting on the floor, making sure there's no commotions going on. I had to deal with so many crazy people, guys. I mean, I had to deal with drunks. I had to deal with uh, commotions. You guys name it, I dealt with it. That's pretty much what my job was <clears throat> for about a year. And the reason why I, I got into it was because recently I knew someone that was like, hey, you know, get into doing this. You know, you can probably make good money. And, you know, you're you're a muscular guy. And maybe this could help you get into something else. And, again, for the most part, I did enjoy the, um, the fundamentals of it. I thought it was going to be a good gig. And... You know, I met some probably, you know, my closest friends there, you know, there are some I consider family and I considered family and most of it was insecurity. And what we did, you know, we were, we were pretty cool. I mean, but the overall issue wasn't the guest. It was just management. And when I first got hired, I thought my management was pretty cool. And then overall, management just got worse and worse and worse. They expected so little of us to wear we were literally the bottom of the totem pole. And what I mean by that is we were the lowest of the low is how we got treated. Everyone tried to tell us what to do and they weren't our bosses. I had ones that was from the high rolling club that she tried acting like she was my boss when something was being said or done. It's like, okay, you're not my boss. And I had ones even in uh, the cocktail waitress's bosses try to get on me. Or I had ones in slots. Try well, actually not in slots because everyone in slots that I knew I was pretty much in friends with. And when I say slots, um, that means anything that has to do with um, the slot machines or any machines in general. Or in the money cage, I was pretty much cool with everybody. So I was cool with everybody for the most part. It's just the main problem I had was people, they were trying to basically tell me what I can and cannot do. And again, management was a problem, but I'll get into that later on. But um, I had some crazy times there. I had people 
<clears throat> you, you go in there, you're going to see all kinds of things. I saw the Temptations perform. I was there during uh, the 2018 uh, Miss Universe pageant. I was there. I got to meet the Yin Yang Twins. I got to meet Pia Pablo. Um, I got to meet um, a few other uh, celebrities off and on uh, that would come over there. And uh, by the pool area, it was a very cool pool area. It, it was a lot of different things that we had to deal with that was really stupid and you could not touch a customer if they tried to, even even if they tried to fight you you couldn't do anything so it was just really stupid and all we had was a radio and they had to like they, we were supposed to do so much but at the same time they're like oh well don't do this and don't do that because you may get you know hurt and but at the same time they expected so much of us and it was just really stupid and our boss our main boss he i thought at first he was cool but unfortunately he he was just a real dick and when I say that, he basically expected so much of us to where you think we were, like we had literally, we were strapped. Like we would have a firearm on us, that we would have a flashlight, that we'd have a taser, a radio, the whole nine yards. Guys, we didn't have none of that. All we had was a radio. What were we supposed to do? We couldn't touch them. So what were we supposed to do? Knock them across the head? Like, come on. We couldn't even do that. So it was just a joke. I mean, they literally, you know, we're like, oh, we're top flight security. You know, that, that scene from like, you know, next Friday, you know, that's how we felt. You know, like we felt like Day Day and Craig most of the time. I mean, I remember one of my best friends. We're like, okay, we're always on the same post together. And we would always tell our superior, we're like, hey, you know, that's the reason why you put me and you on here is because we know how to handle things. And that's all you do is stand and talk 90% of the night. That's all you do. So make sure you had some soft shoes and who you got paired up with, you could talk to. Because otherwise, if you couldn't talk to somebody, it was a long night. I mean, it was a long night. I mean, there were some nights where there were some people I just couldn't talk to. Because there was literally nothing to talk about with that person. And it was either because of that person and I didn't like each other. Or because they just didn't like me. Or something. I mean, I had to deal with what I had to deal with, man. It sucked. And, you know, when you have people that you particularly don't care for, and you get paired up with them, it sucks even more. And that's what happened. I mean, there was times, I, I mean, there were so many times that I would laugh, and guys, I could go on and on and on about stories about what happened, but I don't. <laughs> oh, man. I had some good, I had some good coworkers. I will say that. For the most part, I had some great coworkers at this job. I had, and I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know this now. If you guys have ever worked in a, in a resort casino, if you guys have never even tried to work in a casino, please let me let me tell you about this, man. Don't try to hook up with any of the cocktail waitresses. Let me tell you this right now, and I'm going to be blunt. They are nothing but cock teases. I'm going to say that right now. That is the whole inference of why they're there. Yes, you can try to talk to them. Yes, you can be friends with them. But if you try to get their number, you try to hook up with them, they will give you the runaround for days. I'm going to say that right now. No matter who you know there, whether it be a cocktail waitress, whether it be a wait, some some girl somewhere in that type of place, especially in the workplace, don't do it because it's not worth it. Trust me. I got so much of the run around when I was working there and when I was interested in some different ones, it always went bad. It always went crazy and always bit me in the ass. But I have so many funny stories, man. I have so many funny stories where people, they would, I, I don't even know where to begin, man. I don't want to get too crazy in stories, but I know one time, I had a girl that I was interested in, and my buddy, he was sitting there with me, and he's just like, he's laughing, because he's like, bro, you're laying out all the work, he says, all you gotta do is this and this, and she's gotta do this and this, and it was just, it was so funny, and I had another friend of mine, you know, he, he you know, told me a story about some things, and we saw this guy that had to go to the bathroom so fast, it looked like he was about ready to poo himself on the floor of the actual, uh, the gaming floor, and that's how funny this was, I mean, but a lot of these people that work in this type of environment, they act like they can do whatever they want and they get away with it for the most part. And there was a lot of craziness and a lot of too shadiness going on that I, because just because we were security, we had to work there. And I, guys, I had to work on this job on Christmas. I had to work this job on Thanksgiving. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you've done that. And my thing of it was, is why would you have this open when you have holidays up? It makes no sense. Like, come on. Like, why? Why? Yes, this job had benefits. You got paid 10 an hour for an 8 hour or more shift. And you were lucky you, between all the BS we had to deal with. Yes, you got a lot of accommodations to where, oh, you, you, you know, you learn the correct way to do CPR. You know how to do this. You know how to do that. 
yes, it can open up doors for you, but very small doors. And again, anyone has worked in this field, you understand, especially if you've done security. Security is easy, but at the same time, it can be very boring. It can be the most boring job at all time, depending on where you work. And you can either get the best respect or the least respect. I had so many people that I was cool with, whether it would be a dealer, whether it would be a someone on slots, someone in the cage, someone in the, one of the restaurants, someone, um, whatever. I was friends with a lot of people in there. And some I talked to, some I don't talk to no more. Some I'm not even sure if they still work at the location I worked at. And a lot of it was just a lot of crazy, you know, needless BS. And that's all it really was. And what it, what really led me to this job leaving was they were trying they were on a witch hunt and, and i'm just going to leave it at that they were on a witch hunt if you guys don't know that term it means they're trying to get rid of people and for whatever reason and i remember one of my best friends he quit literally he quit in the middle of shift he was like i'm done i can't handle this no more i had to walk him out unfortunately and he even said bro watch your back and lo and behold not even a month later i got on the chopping block and I was accused of something I didn't do. I was accused of saying bullshit to my supervisor. And when I look back at it now, I still don't even remember saying it. I'm like, mm, no. And I had people, I asked people that. I'm like, did I say it? They're like, no. I had so many people that I asked. They're like, no, 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 no. I had witnesses. I asked, okay, who, who, who apparently said I said it? No one came up and said, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. My manager put his hand in my face that is something you do not do that is disrespectful and that is asking for confrontation whether it is physical or verbal and i still didn't say anything and i and i was going to say oh i was going to take the rap no i didn't take the rap i quit the very next day i could have walked out of that damn thing y'all i could have walked out of that damn job like it was nothing i walked out that job i was like nah i was so pissed off that night guys i was so angry i stood there at my post i was so angry and i was working with someone that i couldn't even talk to about this and then one of my friends and she was in I, oh man she, she was in um oh man she she was in another uh i want to say she was in uh slots and she comes to me and she's like what, what's going on you know and, and i just tell her hey um you know, she looked at me, she says, well, what's going on? And I told her, and she looks at me, she says, no, she says, that's not, I don't see you saying stuff like that. And I'm like, I know. And she even said, that's not you. And then I said, exactly. So she believed me, others believed me, and everyone said that the guy was an asshole because they're like, how, he's taking the side of somebody that pretty much, you know, you get these other people that they don't want to cause issues. They're showing up late. They're showing up excuses. They're lazy. And you make them wonder, okay, why you even hire these people? Because it's, oh, we go through it's a very strict uh, background and everything. And they're like, no, you don't. Because look at some of the people you hired. Some of them look like they could be, you know, drug dealers on the street for crying out loud. So again, it's like you don't go through a good process like you think you do. So the way I did it was I turned myself in the very next night or next day. And the guy I was talking to at HR, he even was like trying to talk to me. And I found out him and my manager was friends. So I was like, no, I'm not even going to say anything. And then what makes it even crazier is over time, so many people I knew, they left. They, they left that place. They just, they were done. They were so done with that place. I had so many people that would quit because either the money, the nonsense, everything. There's people I know that were supposed to retire that they wouldn't even allow them to retire because, oh, we need you. And then the shift I worked on is like a skeleton crew now. There's only like, I would say, two, three people on that shift that I would know. And there would be 13 of us total that you would have to have on that casino floor for it to be legal. So... If you guys worked in a casino, let me know. If you guys have worked in an environment like that, let me know. Because, again, there's a lot of good and bad for that. And, again, I met some of my best friends on this job. I did. And I met a lot of good people, whether it be customers, whether it be coworkers, whatever. It was a good job, but at the same time, it wasn't worth the degrading. It wasn't worth the nonsense. And it wasn't worth the, the BS that I had to deal with day in and day out for 
a measly ten dollars a night because or an hour because it, it just it wasn't worth it and there were some people that wouldn't even last not even a full like month and then after that happened so many people decided to leave but overall guys that has been the journey of talking in ways i'm not gonna diverge all the information about jobs but if you guys ever worked in that type of environment then obviously let me know but um I know some of my uh, former co-workers may see this, and some I'll be happy to. Others, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, either way, guys, I mean, I've been very happy and fortunate to just go into this journey and talk about uh, jobs I've worked on. And whether or not these get views or not, that is kind of irrelevant. I would hope it gets views. But if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this is going to be a little long because... Again, this is the last one. This was one of my favorite jobs I worked at. There's a lot of stories involved. Uh, some of them I can say, some of them I cannot say due to uh, I don't want to get in trouble or anything on YouTube, but you never know. But I will say, though, if you want to take a crack at working at a casino, by all means try. Um, sometimes for for some people, other times for not everybody, um, especially depending on what type of, uh, I would say, position you're working at. And security is not a bad, uh, not a bad gig. It's not. It's not a bad gig. If if you know how to do it, you know what to do, and you move up in the ranks, and you move up to a good company that knows what they're doing, they're respectable. Then by all means, do that. But overall, that's just my thoughts. Either way, guys, let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments. And this is my review at working at Margaritaville. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you next time.